Hey there folks, back at you with another video. Um, today we're going to start on the rebuild for the Allison uh, 1000. Uh, this here is 5 speed. Comes out of this here truck. So yeah, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. Don't cost nothing. Let's get past the intro. Let's get into this. All right, so this here is an uh, Allison 1000 five-speed. Comes out of my uh, O2 Chevy Silverado. Uh, this one here has the 8.1, um, but they had the same transmission. Uh, behind the Duramaxes, the only difference is uh, the torque converter. That's the only difference between a, uh, an 8.1 or an Allison, or an 8.1 and a Duramax. So uh, other than that, same transmission so uh, first thing I did is I made me a bracket so I can bolt it right here on the PTO cover and I'm using my engine uh, engine stand so I can roll this transmission back and forth every you know which way I want to so so that's what I got done there um, I've got my parts in so and then I got me a book and I read through it first uh, post you know put some posties on there what I think was important and this here's the book it wasn't all that much so <clears throat> I do like to say that I am not an expert transmission builder of any kind um, I've got some experience with 4L60s and the ZF6s uh, out of Fords um, I rebuilt a couple of those so like I said I am not an expert transmission builder or a by by any means uh, I just have a little bit of experience on working on transmissions so that's it that's why I got the book I'm gonna follow that to the letter and uh, yeah so you can get this thing fixed and uh, see if we can get her back on the road uh, the symptoms I had was it was slipping bad especially when the transmission got warm come up to a stop sign and I mean I had to punch the throttle up to like 15 to 1700 rpms in order to start moving again so uh, that was my uh, those were my symptoms um, heart clunking sometimes and sometimes I didn't want to go into gear so you put it in reverse it would go three foot and then it will jump out and uh, neutral light was flashing so those uh, those were some of the things that I was dealing with so pretty sure the clutches are bad on it because the transmission fluid that was coming out looked really really black changed the transmission fluid out and after I'd say 50 miles uh, it looked just as black again like engine oil so like diesel engine oil so yeah so I'm pretty sure the clutches are burned up that's why it's slipping so okay let's get into this and uh, let's get going so all right we'll open up our book here so here it says uh, let's give you the step-by-step -step instructions on what to do so now we need to take uh, all the sensors out and uh, yeah We'll get going on that and then we'll be right back. Alright, we've got the, the speed sensors out, um, the neutral safety switch, we've got that out. I uh, need 15 and 13 for that and 10 mil. Um, now we need to roll this, now turn this thing upside down because now we need to get, uh, get into the oil pan, so we need to take all these bolts out. Um, yeah. So we'll get that done and we'll be back. All right, <clears throat> so now we got the oil pan removed. Um, and the uh, filter is out. You can throw that in the trash. Next thing we need to remove is this thing right here. And 
just throw that in the oil pan and then uh, yeah we'll get to the next step I'll be right back next step is this um, plug here uh, this is where your wiring harness uh, hooks up to for um, for the all the solenoids in here uh, I use a 32 millimeter socket set it over there give it a light tap I mean and don't go berserk on that I mean it's plastic so you got to be extremely gentle so I gave that a little tap right here on the head and then you can tell little clippies suck, uh, suck in the hole and I use the pry bar like this and just ever so gently from left to right see that there you go so that's loose as you can tell all right make sure you got a catch pan on there there because there will be all kinds of oil running every which way out of every kind of orifice that you didn't even think of so uh saves you a bunch of stuff like that so i'm gonna throw some floor dry on that we'll be right back all right now i'm gonna take the foul body off i'm gonna take one two three four five six bolts loose on this side right here where the solenoids are at and then on this side one two three four five six seven eight nine so we're going to have 15 bolts all together small pry bar and and don't go berserk on this it's you know i mean just ever so gently everything is loose now so now we should be able to take the entire valve body off and we can lay that off to the side don't forget um, your uh, pigtail right here make sure that's all the way out there you go now we can take this off and uh, we'll be right back all right um, so this is how it looks like with the valve body off got right here There is a um, got to keep in mind right here. Um, it will click through the gears as you lift it up and out. So just uh, just keep that in mind. Um, take the uh, filter off, and now we're going to tip it over in the upward uh, upward position. And uh, we're gonna start dug digging in the in the dead end of it. So, all right, all right. Now we got her in the upward position. Um, there's a cover plate right here that you got to take out. It just pops right out. You need uh, need a little pry bar to pop it out. <coughs> right here we got the uh, the uh, tranny cooler line adapter piece. There's one right there, one right there. It takes 32 mil. You have to take this one. This one has to come absolutely off, otherwise you can never get to this bolt here. So that takes 32 mil. We can start taking all the bolts out on the outside. Right here, the ones on the inners don't have to come out because we're just going to take the uh, bell housing off. So. these and then there's three right here three right here and grab a soft blow hammer and just like this here just gentle I mean I mean don't beat don't beat it too hard give it a couple taps going around and then um, should be able to lift her off that means the bell housing and the oil pump will come off together and then we can get to the to the first set of clutches so all right 
All right, we get the bell housing off. We'll worry about the oil pump later. So uh, we're just disassembling right now. Um, C1, C2 uh, clutch housing. I'll just lift it up like this. <clears throat> um, we're going to tear into that later. So, and then there should be a thrust washer in here somewhere, yep, right there. Give me one second here. Don't forget to take this out. Um, now I'm going to flip her upside down and uh, start working on the, on the tail housing. So, all right. All right, so we got it flipped up, uh, upside down. So tail housing is uh, pointing up. Uh, we uh, loosen up all 16 bolts uh, to take, uh, in order to take this off. Keep in mind there is, this one here had tension on it. It jumped up on itself. If you do have to use a pry bar, keep in mind there's a little notch right there for it to go, you know, to stick your pry bar in there if you need it. Um, mine, I loosened up the bolts and it popped up, so just keep that in mind. Alright, I'm probably going to need two hands, so I'll be right back. Ooh, I almost made a boo-boo on this. So, it's not as cut as dry as just lifting it off. Um, you gotta take uh, this lock nut off that holds the housing in place and <clears throat> I use this tool for that it's just a regular uh, socket for four wheel drive uh, axle nuts with a slot in it uh, you can buy them anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks so this is what I used. Here's the part number um, if you want to use it or buy that. Uh, the original tool is, uh, is quite expensive and uh, this here actually fits pretty darn, pretty darn good. And it's cheap enough that if you really have to modify it a little bit, you can. So uh, yeah. So that's what I use for that to get, uh, to get that off. So set the tool off to the side here. So now we got this off, and as you can tell, we can start looking on the inside already. So, all right, let's get this tail housing off, and uh, we'll be back. All right, uh, the book shows now to remove the P3 uh, sun gear and thrust bearing. So, that's right here. I'm not sure if I can do this with one hand, guys. I'll be right back. I uh, lifted it right out, but need two hands, otherwise it keeps catching all over to the side. So, I suppose we can get this off. Right here. A thrust bearing here. Sure is. It goes like that. All right. We'll set that right here. Set that right there. This here's the sun gear. It's got a spacer on here. So let's look at the sun gear real quick. This how it looks like. Looks good. Looks good as well. That looks good. <clears throat> the teeth are all still nice and sharp looking. They spin nicely, so 
set that back like that. All right, now uh, let's get into the next thing. All right, I'll be right back. All right, um, I just went a little bit ahead of it. So this was sitting like right there. So we can take that off. This is where that thrust washer was sitting. So we can take these two items off. We'll set it over here. I just like to put it the way I pulled it out. There we go. And can take this out. Oh, there went a the thrust washer. So, all right. All right, so there's clearly a thrust washer in there. I'm gonna need two hands for that to get that dug out. So I'll be right back. Uh, so now we got all this out. Need to get the uh, parking pole out. Um, if the pin ain't there, look back to the housing here, uh, till shaft housing, and look what we got here. That's the one that's supposed to be in there. Just like that. So that needs to be removed right here. So let's get that done right quick. Uh, yeah. This needs to be removed, that and the spring. So, all right, I'll get that done real quick and then be right back. All right, this little spring here can be a little wanker. So, grim needle nose. And then I was able to pry. Oh, sorry about that. Grab a needle nose and I was able to pry up on that so and this is how it looks like that's why it's catching and on the other side that's how it looks like right there and it sits hooked in right here in this little hole like that so all right on to the next thing all right um, then it says to remove the p2 planetary and there's a thrust washer in here that needs to come out um, just grab with two hands one on each side like this opposite from one another and just lift it right out uh, these trees will will turn on you, but yeah. So we got that out. Uh, and we're left with this. So all right, on to the next step. All right. Um, now we can take the uh, C5 clutch uh, clutch assembly out, clutch spring out right here. Just to keep in mind, there's a little lip right there, so that's where that goes. And uh, now we can take all this out. So I'll get that done. I'll be right back. All right. Once you get the um, P or the C5 clutches uh, removed, I got them all sitting right there. We can take out the uh, P1 planetary. Don't forget about this little fellow right here. Also keep in mind there's a notch for that thing to sit in, as you can tell. Just for future references. Um, <clears throat> now it's got a snap ring right here. We're going to have to pop that out. And then we can take these clutches out. And uh, on to the next one. So yeah, let me get this snap ring out. These clutches out. And uh, then I'll be right back. Um, I'm sure and this snap ring can be a uh, it's pretty stiff so just keep that in mind <clears throat> I grab my big screwdriver here pry it away from the edge used a uh, hook pick lifted it up a little bit right here on the lip then I was able to put this screwdriver under there and now I just keep twisting twisting my screwdriver like that 
and keep moving this little screwdriver in order to lift it up so um, I still got the other about half foot to do but once you get her going like that and lift it up uh, it's pretty easy so okay I'll be right back all right so <clears throat> once you get this snap ring out there's another snap ring in there it's a spiral ring you need to find a beginning mine was sitting right here and you just start pulling it out little by little use a screwdriver to twist it out and just just be gentle and there it is so now you get this one out And now we can get <clears throat> this clutch back out. So we're gonna need two hands for that, so I'll be back. Alright, now this thing sits down in there like that. And just pull this out. We we can pull this out right here. We'll pull this out and then there's another clutch back something back in there so All right okay I'll be right back all right uh, sorry about that so now we got all this out as you can tell, I mean, this oil was nasty. So, anyway, and stinks too. But anyway, now we can flip this thing over and we'll get a last, uh, last bit of clutch back out. So, all right. We got another snap ring in here. Um, got to fiddle with these two. Uh, I use these two screwdrivers to get that one out. So now give me a second here. All right. and these are the last ones. It's supposed to stay on there like that is the idea. All right. Okay, so there's that. plunger in here hmm. that drain hole is over there or drain hole or uh, there's a tiny little hole right there can you see it the light change so that's on the opposite that was sitting right there on the opposite side of this right there so all right Okay, so yeah, that's that, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm going to make this a two-part video. Uh, we'll call this one part one, disassembly of the Allison 1000 transmission. Um, I'm going to get all the parts cleaned up, and then uh, so we're getting ready for assembly again. So yeah. Please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. Don't cost nothing. And uh, we're going to catch y'all on the next one. Peace out.